art mix. Well, this is how I usually start my YouTube videos, but today, since I'm doing sort of a presentation here, I figured I'd just start it out the same way. So, this is what is LARP. And now, if you look online, if you ask around, a lot of people have a pretty good idea of what LARP is. And you'll find all kinds of videos and documents written on what is LARP, but they're all sort of focused on what that individual thinks. I haven't seen any real sort of big picture of what is LARP you know, type of presentations. I want to sort of open existing LARPers eyes to sort of the world at large of LARPing. And if you've never LARPed before, give you a sort of a good broad based understanding of what type of LARPs there are and what is really out there. Now, Merriam-Webster Dictionary doesn't even have a definition for LARP, but we know LARP is an acronym for live action role playing. Now, if you go on dictionary.com, it actually defines it as a type of role playing game in which each participant assumes a particular character and acts out various scenarios at events which last for a predetermined time. But what does that even mean? So, I think the best way to start this out is to explain what is LARP to me. Now, a lot of people will explain it as cops and robbers for adults. Uh, some people will describe it as tabletop role playing come to life. But if you don't know what tabletop role playing is, you may not be able to equate that. So I view it more as video gaming come to life. So for me, I play all kinds of games. I play board games, video games, tabletop role playing games. I've been playing for many, many years. But for me, when I think about LARPing, because I use LARPing as a form of entertainment, a form of fun, I view it as a game. So for me, it's really video gaming come to life. When I'm out there playing a character, doing awesome things, it's me basically playing a video game in where I'm the hero, or at least a hero in my own mind, uh, whenever things are going on. Now, as far as LARPing, when we think about LARPing in America, the standard American boffer style LARP comes to mind. And these are things you'll see in movies like Role Models and Knights of Badass. Them. And this is the type of thing where people are out in the woods are hitting each other with PVC pipe covered in pool noodles or pipe insulation with duct tape on. You know, they may have little cloth packets of birds eating and they're yelling lightning bolt a whole lot. But this is the picture uh, that the media has sort of created for us when we think of LARPing, at least in North America. You now overseas it's a little bit different, but if you were to walk to a stranger, in the United States or somewhere and say, hey, I'm a LARPer, they're immediately going to reference those movies. And those movies do not exactly paint the hobby in the best light. I mean, we may laugh at them, but as far as what the games actually are, the movies are trash. Uh, I don't care for them. <laughs> so, as far as American Stop Off LARP, that's one kind of LARP. But, before we get to the different types of LARP, we need to understand that there are tons of different genres. Now, as far as genres of art, or style of art, or setting, however you want to say it, there's everything from the well-known franchises, so there's Lord of the Rings, there's Harry Potter, there's Star Wars, uh, there's Mad Max, and Blade Runner, there's pretty much any major sort of franchise you can think of, there's probably a LARP for it, even things like, um, romance novels like Jane Austen novels and things like that. They exist out there. And as far as time periods, there's everything from ancient, biblical, Roman, Egyptian, medieval, uh, Victorian, the 20s, the 70s, uh, today, near future, cyberpunk, post-apocalyptic, far future, science fiction, and every sort of time frame you can imagine. And then of course, there are just sort of broad ideas like vampires, zombies, uh, ghosts, and really just almost anything you could think of has probably been a LARP or could be a LARP. They are turned into one in some way. So we talk about American Boffer LARPs, which is what all of you here are probably most familiar with, and maybe those watching the video may be familiar with. But let's talk about what else is out there. So an American Boffer LARP usually have hit points, mana points, you can do certain things. You can stop a game and do like rolls and tumbles and flips and you can fly and do all kinds of these special abilities. But then there are European LARPs, which they hate being compared to American games, but basically European LARPs are similar to American style games except the production value is usually higher. So they have a tendency to use latex style swords, which look a lot better. People put more effort into costumes 
and the games are a little bit more involved. People spend a lot of time, money, and effort going into this hobby and almost of it as a lifestyle as opposed to a lot of American workers who they view it as a thing to do on the weekend. Uh, now I'm not saying that these are exclusive because a lot of this does cross over, but generally speaking, in European LARPs, they have sayings, what you see is what you get, and you can do what you can do. What you see is what you get is because in these LARPs, they have incredible venues. Maybe you're playing in a field outside of a castle, you're playing in an actual battlefield that occurred. Uh, whenever you play an American offer LARP, usually people have like a green cloth over them, and you would say, well, what do I see? And they may say, well, you see a goblin, you see an orc, you see a troll. Maybe they're just a fisherman with a green shirt on. It's hard to tell, so you have to ask. When you think about European games and the what you see is what you get, when you see something coming at you, you know it's a goblin, an orc, a troll, a fisherman, because they have latex prosthetics on, they have full costumes, they're acting out the parts. And really, it's more immersive, but it's less imagination, in my opinion. I feel like in American Bob Flock, you have to have a very strong imagination and suspension of disbelief. European LARPs, you can take things more at face value. It doesn't require quite as much imagination to play. Now, American European LARPs, these are sort of the big categories that stuff are split into, but then there's a ton of other types of LARPs out there. Uh, one type thing is festivals. Now, I view festival style LARPs as big events like Wasteland Weekend, things like Dragon Fest, Conquest of Mythia, Beclean. Uh, those type of games where it's a big, usually annual, sometimes semi-annual type game where there are thousands to tens of thousands of people there. And you're all in costume, you're all sort of united under a single theme. And some of these festivals have more of a game type of aspect or feel to it. There's big battles. Others have less of that, but you're still dressed up. You probably have a persona of some type, so you have a fake name or a character that you're playing in this setting. And basically you're LARPing, because not all LARPs have physical combat. Uh, they really do sort of vary. <sighs> Moving on from festivals, there is blockbuster LARPs. Now blockbuster LARPs, these are the more expensive, really sort of over-the-top LARPs. And these are ones like Colony Alpha, uh, School, of, uh, School of Wizardry, there's also um, just a bunch of different games, Witcher School, where you would go and they actually rent castles, they rent estates, they rent decommissioned uh, naval ships to dress up like spaceships, and they run these LARPs inside of these. And it's a very high production value. Some of these games will provide you with a costume. Um, most of these games will provide you with a character as well. Now, sometimes you have a little bit of input as to what your character is, but a lot of times they just hand them to you or they mail them out to you as well. And so in that fashion, really at that point, you're more or less an actor in a play, so to speak, than a character that you created and brought to life. But it's definitely still LARPing, and you still have, you know, it's all free form, so you can pretty much do what you want. But a lot of those type of games, if they give you a character, or if you don't pay to sort of level up to a higher tier, you're stuck with what they give you. And there's a Bob's Burgers episode which is hilarious and pretty much sums this up. They go to a Jane Austen style uh, LARP and a lot of people get picked to be sort of the nobility and then a bunch of people get picked to be the servants. And uh, the servants are so mad that they're not playing the nobility and they're half the way to these people hand and foot that they rebel against them. So it's a pretty cool cartoon episode to check out if you get a chance. But that reminds me of a blockbuster LARP. Now they're not all like that, but you know, sometimes it can be, but you know, a lot of people, they don't mind playing certain. Sometimes they think that that's fun uh, to take that role. And if you are into that, then that's fine. Not everybody necessarily wants to play like a gentleman or a lady. And that's fine if you don't want to. There's something there for everyone. Uh, the next category I would consider is the, it's not a LARP, I'm not a LARPer category. And into this category, I would clump everything where you may encounter a person that would say, I don't LARP, I'm not a LARPer. These are things like the SCA. Uh, these are things like paintballers, airsofters, um, possibly cosplayers, uh, people that do interactive theater, people at escape rooms, even grandma and grandpa when they go on a train ride and have a dinner theater. 
This is all sort of LARP as well. If you're in some sort of costume or garb, if you are taking on the role of someone who is not yourself, so you have some sort of persona, or you're playing a character, and you're trying to accomplish some sort of goal, then that sort of shifts these things into what I would consider LARP. So paintballers and airsoft players, if you're just out and you're shooting, that's one thing, but the moment you say, we're SEAL Team 6, we're going into a cave system in Baghdad, and this is our target, guess what? You've taken on a role, now you're playing, <laughs> you're LARPing. The same way with escape rooms, and not all of them, but if you're you know, dressed up or you're taking on some sort of role while you're doing it, where there's a bunch of uh, things that you need to accomplish, it could be sort of a LARP. Uh, SCA people, reenactors, you know, they will say that they're not, but you're in costume, you're probably playing some sort of character or persona, you're fighting, you're doing things, uh, that's LARP. But you can be an activist, reenactors, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's a stigma attached to LARPing, and I feel like a lot of times these folks, they want to try to avoid that, they don't want to be clumped into the people from Knights of Badass them, or the role models movie. Um, because of negative connotations that go with that. But I still consider all of those things LARPs, and I think that they can be scrutinized and sort of put under that umbrella as well. Nordic LARPs, Nordic LARPs tend to be a little bit more on the serious side of things. They can be dark. Uh, Nordic LARPs are a good place to go if you want to experience something like um, being a terrorist and being involved in a terrorist attack, being a victim of that. Uh, things like being a prisoner for a day and experiencing simulated torture and just really going through a terrible experience. Uh, they're also good for things like um, experiencing a first date or uh, just all kinds of you know, just interesting things. And a lot of them are run as one-shot type of deals, which means that they're only done one time or it's something that's just done on occasion as opposed to being something that runs every month or every week. And these type of games, you know, they're very cool. They usually have a good production value and they can be intense. Uh, some of these games you can experience simulated rape if you want to. Now for me, these are WTF moments uh, because I couldn't imagine anyone who would want to be the aggressor or the victim in this category, but there's people out there that do want to see how they would fare in these scenarios and hey, to each their own, it's definitely not something I would have any interest in, nor being tortured or any of that, but these games do exist. And then there are these like black box LARPs where you're in a room, it's all black, black floor, black ceiling, black walls, and really this is more I would consider like an experiment or sort of a theater type of aspect. Sometimes there's an audience, but really you're in a room sort of sensory deprived and the storyteller or the GM or whatever you want to call it would control the lighting and the audio and things of that nature. So imagine yourself just in a black room and perhaps there's something on the floor and then a light shines on it. Now you don't have a character, you don't know the rules, you have no idea what you're supposed to be doing, but you see this and that should probably tell you to interact with it. But how do you interact with it? Do you pick it up? Do you look at it? Do you smell it? Do you eat it? Do you throw it? Do you break it? This is all part of that experience. And sometimes you can interact with the audience, other times you cannot. The storytellers may give direction, they may not give direction. It's really sort of just an interpretive thing, and it really just depends on what the storyteller is trying to convey. And I would almost sort of call it more like art in motion than probably LARP, but it falls into the category. So a big umbrella of LARP that covers a whole bunch of stuff. There are some outlying stuff, but I would still say it falls into the category of LARP. So when people ask me, <laughs> what is LARP? And how do you define LARP? It's such a massive term that it's just really, really difficult to define. And when someone says, what is LARP? To me, I say, LARP is whatever you want it to be. Because literally, there is a LARP there for every experience you want to have. And sometimes LARPs aren't meant to be for entertainment. They don't even have to be fun. 
A lot of awards are used for research, they're used for personal growth, they can be used for therapy, and they can be used for escapism. Some people just want to get away from their spouse or their kids for the weekend. Some people have a poor station in life and they come to a game and they get to play a knight or a king and it helps them to get away from life for a minute. Or maybe they have a high position in life and they want to come into the game and they want to play a servant at that game or they want to play, you know, just, you know, the town drunk or something at the game to get away from sort of that status. Really, work can be whatever you make it out to be. And if you're using it for therapy to try to, um, you know, work through personal issues or maybe just get better at speaking to people, maybe you just want to make friends and become a little bit more outgoing, tons of reasons for people to LARP. And that's why it's such a broad-based category. So for someone to write a little paper or make a five-minute video on LARPing 101 or what is LARPing, it's through a very, very focused scope that you're looking. Because when you think about LARP big picture, there's just so much stuff that it's almost impossible to define, especially with a one sentence description on dictionary.com. I hope that you like this presentation. Uh, please, if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them at the end here. And uh, be sure to check out my channel I'm on YouTube at LARP Mix. You can also Google LARP Mix. You'll find my videos, I've been doing for a couple years, I have over 200 videos. And whether you're just getting started, where you've been LARPing for a long time, I'm sure you'll find something there to check out. And if you do, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button on the video if you watch, and of course, as always, adventure on.